Hello, welcome to the first episode of this devlog series. I've been doubting whether or not to make this, but I feel like it's good for both growing the popularity for this game and to get some feedback from you. This is Rogue's Odyssey, Chronicles from the Wasteland. The name is not final. It's a roguelike, cave exploring game where you have to fight your way through randomly generated levels filled with enemies, not unlike The Binding of Isaac, which is a great inspiration to this game, and one of my all time favorites. You have to escape the underground and infiltrate the city where the Order, what cast you, rules and defeat its leader. All you have is a weapon, basic movement and random upgrades throughout the levels that will increase your stats and chances to succeed. You will also gain gold that can be used in the overworld shop to buy different weapons, characters and some other stuff. I decided not to make stats upgradable from here because I don't really want this game to have meta progression as it can be frustrating for new players to feel like they need to grind in order to have a chance of beating the game. Ok, so going back in time, I started learning game dev with Unity following brackets how to make a video game in Unity. Then I tried to bite on more than I could chew and ended up getting burnt out, taking a break and I followed Harvard's CS50 class by David Milan, which I highly recommend as it helped me understand what I could do with code across many languages. After that, my good friend Chris from Green Systems, who has a pretty cool game on Steam, Fragment Hunters, recommended me Godot as an engine for its simplicity and the lightweight. I tried it out and I really enjoyed the overall work environment and how everything feels lighter compared to Unity and I also felt like GD script is easier, at least for me, than C Sharp, which helped me enjoy more programming and feel less burnt out for not being able to do anything without following a tutorial, which happened a lot. I then made a couple simple games, a kind of a Pong remake to learn about the engine and figure out the workflow. Then I tried to make something bigger and felt a little frustrated for not being able to do anything by myself and decided to go for another tutorial. Heartbeast's action RPG tutorial, which is a great foundation for implementing all the basics for an RPG game, which also translates very well into other genres. After completing that in a little over a week, I decided to make a game for a game jam, since I wanted to practice more of the basics and get some more experience before tackling a bigger project. So I joined this game jam, where the theme was one minute and made Chrono Chase. I had this idea of the player being inside of a stock. A stock. Stock market. I had this idea of the player being stuck inside of a clock and having to run away from the second's hand while dodging enemy turrets bullets that got harder by the minute. I was actually surprised that I managed to make it in 3 days. While not being a masterpiece it has some good polish and gameplay for the time it took and for the experience I have. Ok, that's enough of what I did in the past, now back to this new game. What I have so far is a character made with Kenny's creature mixer and I just changed him up a bit to my liking. He is kind of a pirate explorer mix holding a shotgun. I have a basic room which we will get into in a bit, and an enemy, also made it Kenny's Creature Mixer, and I changed him quite a bit to seem more creepy. I implemented an HP and a damage system with some hit and hurt boxes, which I learned from the Heart Beast tutorial, and the respective visual cues, like the blood particles coming out. Some of the art is just placeholder for now, and it might change in the future. I want the game to have a slightly darker mood than usual, which is why I chose this color palette, with colors that have very low saturation values, helping the feeling set in. I then started working on the meat on the bones for me, since it's the thing I'm the most unconfident about, random procedurally generated levels. I started by looking into various algorithms used in the genre, to find out what I really wanted, and watched some cool tutorials such as Heart Beast's random level generation with Walker, which I watched before trying and felt like it really wasn't what I was going for. Then I watched Kids Can Code's procedural generation in Godot and felt like this one was more what I had in mind. After following it and having a working generation, I decided to scratch it all, since it really wasn't what I envisioned, and I followed Blackthorn Prod's random dungeon generator instead. Even though it's in Unity, you can still get the basics of it. I first tried making a scene out of all the rooms, with every combination, which are 15, exported as a sprite, after which I decided that it might be too complex and had a lot of issues, so I then just used the base room with all doors open and exported the walls covering the doors as PNGs, and made the combinations work like that. I gave the base room a script that basically has a function for having a door in that wall, which makes the sprite invisible, revealing the door, and deactivates the collision box on that side. I then randomize the room to have the doors in random positions, other than the position I need to have a door in, which are the walls that have rooms next to them. To achieve that, I have four spawners, which are just every two Ds with a collider. And if they collide, I just make it not spawn a room there, because it already has one. Each spawner has a variable number, one for north, two for south, 3 for west and 4 for east. If it's 3 for example, 
means that the spawner is on the left side and I want to spawn a room in that position with the door to the right, so they connect. And I just randomize the remaining doors that don't have a connection. At the moment I still don't have this working properly, so the point is to do that and try to find a good algorithm to be able to pick how many rooms I want to have. I also need to work on the rooms themselves, making variations of obstacles and enemies, also dependent on how far you are in the game, but that's a problem for future me. Alright, so after a bit more trying and after hitting my head against the wall a few times, I went to look for better solutions and I found this tutorial, with just 8 k views and over 3 years old, it's exactly what I needed. After adapting the code to Godot 4 and making a few tweaks, I am now spawning the rooms randomly and I handle the doors afterwards. I started by adding some area to these a few pixels after the doors to detect if something is there. I made the rooms have no doors at the start and if there is a body that enters that detector area, it means that the room was spawned there and we want that door to be open. This way makes way more sense to me. We just spawn the rooms wherever and then we worry about the doors. I then decided to add some corridors which did exist in the tutorial but at the time I decided not to add them but now I wasn't really happy with how everything looked all connected. And in the tutorial these corridors don't always connect between rooms, so even if I have a bunch of rooms next to each other, some of them won't be connected, which changes a lot visually and in game. Finally, I added some of the stuff I got so far just to see how it's looking. A player that shoots can damage an enemy, which can also damage the player back, all in a randomly generated level. I also added a green and a red module to the start and end rooms, which is not final since the start room is always at position 0, 0 so that was easy, and the end room is always the rightmost room, with this simple code, and that can happen to be right next to the start room, which is not ideal. I need to change it up and make it the furthest room away instead. Ok, so I messed a bit with the code and this wasn't too hard, so I just basically changed my variable to be the furthest room instead, and there is a distance which is just the room position x plus the room position y, returning the absolute value. So basically it just iterates over all the rooms, and if the absolute value from position x plus position y is higher than the previous end rooms, this one becomes the end room. Finally I just added a camera 2D with 4 every 2Ds on the extents, and if a player crosses one, the camera's position just moves to the room on that side. Ok, so my plans for the future are make the doors close during fights and open afterwards, add a couple more enemies, add a boss, add some items, add some gold, gold drops at the end of the rooms, you know, a lot of stuff. But for now that's the plan, just add the minimum content needed to make a playable level. It's been about a week and a half since I started this project and I feel like this is a good point for me to end the video. I'm not sure when I'm gonna upload again, but I hope that I can get some good progress till then. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope that you learned something from this video. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Peace.